Hey guys, in this video we're doing Center Differentials 101 and this is geared towards new people being in the 101 series and in this one we're going to go over the Center Differential and we're going to explain what it does within the car and how to get the most out of it when you go to set yours up for your style of driving. There's no right or wrong about it as long as the car controls the way you want it to and you're having fun with it you're good to go. Still, if you want a little more out of your car and you want to know how to tune these, that's what this one is for. This should be pretty informative, guys. I hope it helps. Check this out. Okay, so let's take a second and look at this one here. This is the Arm Italian 6S EXB. And this one is a good example of that. And take a look here. And you'll see right in here, that's where that center differential is. And there's drive line to the rear, drive line to the front. And what happens is the motor puts power to the differential and it drives the wheels. That's obvious, I get that. But at the same time, depending on your traction, so let's say we're running in a high traction situation. It could be on asphalt. It could be in decent grass. Grass is high traction, guys. It is. It can cause heat in the motor. It can cause all kinds of things because it takes more amperage to drive it when that traction doesn't allow the tires to spin. Still, when you hit the gas and this thing takes off, you'll notice it crouches. On traction, these do this. Now, the thing about that is, depending on the fluid you have in your differential, that will mitigate how things work. So what I mean by that is when this crouches, it adds more traction to the back tires. If they're not spinning, they've got traction. Now, if you have a really stiff fluid in here, this front end's gonna raise, okay? It will, because it doesn't stop putting power to the rear wheels, and the more power you put, the higher it raises. Now, the reason it raises, there's two reasons for that. One, the car pulls and it crouches. That's how that works, but secondarily, it, depending if you have really big tires this plays even more of a role but the inertia of the tires the mass that's in these tires as they rotate forward it counter rotates against the chassis and you really notice this when you're in the air if you hit the gra if you hit the gas when you're in the air the front comes up if you hit the brakes the front comes down okay that has to do with tire mass and rotation still at the same time that can be mitigated to some extent. So here's the thing. If you're into stunting, a stiffer fluid makes sense because it'll get those front wheels in the air easier. But if you want that acceleration, but you don't want to get out of control, you want to try and keep the front tires on the ground, a thinner fluid will slowly decrease the amount of torque to the rear wheels and it'll send the overspin to the front. So these will grow in the front but it'll keep that front tire, front tire set on the ground longer because it allows it to bleed the extra power off the front. Control has a lot to do with that. Now, setting your fluid for what you're gonna run in, this may take a couple of times for you to get it right. At the first point, what you wanna do is set to kind of a medium fluid. And the way you set your differentials up is entirely up to you. We've said that before, but generally, depending on controllability, you go with a fairly heavy fluid in the front, not super strong and you don't wanna lock it down, you want rotation, but a fairly heavy fluid in the front, a lighter fluid in the back, and a heavy fluid in the middle. A lot of bashers set them up that way. It gets the wheelies up, it gets the backflips happening. It does all of that. Now, the problem being, some people like to put earplugs in here, and we've done this. If you just put straight earplugs in there, you're more or less just locking it down. But the earplugs under impact will allow slight rotation so it's not as hard on the equipment. But the more power you put to the rear wheels, it drives more power through the drive system all the way out to the hubs, right to the wheels, and you get a lot more torque involved in that and it can wear out drive cups, it can wear out the pins in the axles, it can wear a lot more parts because you're putting a lot more power to it. To mitigate that, you put a little lighter fluid in here, it'll bleed more power off the front, it won't throw quite so much against these parts back here, you'll get more longevity out of your car if that's what you're into, and it'll add controllability because you can't steer these when these are off the ground. You have to keep these on the ground for steering. That's just how that goes. We don't have individual brakes in the back where we can steer it that way. These need to be down. So if you're into stunting, a stiff fluid in the middle makes a good deal of sense. But if you want that controllability, you want that whole shot. If you're looking for something where you and your buddy take off from the line, you put the thinner fluid in here so you'll overspin a little bit, you'll still get your acceleration, but while their wheels are in the air, you're driving away from them. So 
Control makes a lot of difference when you change the fluids in the center. Keep in mind, the center differential is to mitigate the power properly, it'll send it to one or the other depending on your application. In a lighter situation where you don't have as much traction, these are gonna spin, you won't have to worry so much about that. The whole car will spin the tires and you can just steer it out and away you go. But when you gain traction, it's gonna let those front wheels come up and give it that really cool look when you're stunting and goofing around with the friends. That is really cool too. Keep in mind, this is all your choice on what you wanna do with your RC and your chosen application. All right, so let's take a look at a few different RCs, and these are all 6S. We have the Corali X, Kronos XTR. Next to that, we have the Talion from Arma. Next to that, we have the Traxxas Sledge. And all are built basically the same way, so this all applies to all of them. Also, we'll show you what the Creighton 4S, which has the new differential in it, looks like as far as that goes. You can't see the differential. It's in the housing but it plays the same role as the others. So have a look at this. So this is the Team Corelli Kronos XTR, and you'll notice the differential layout on this. The motor connects directly to the differential. And we'll come over here to the Talion, and we'll notice that it is set up pretty much the same way. The motor connects to that center differential with the drive lines. And we've modified this one, but it's basically the same layout here on the sledge, but the motor's set in the other direction. Still, pretty much the same layout for all three. Now let's take a look at the uh, Creighton 4S, and we added this differential. This came with a slipper diff, or a slipper clutch in it, and this is what the differential looks like in that, and the internals on it work in much the same manner. All right, so before you get into the comments and let me know that the fans destroyed on the Italian were aware of that. We had a jumping day that we took it out and we hit the ramp at least 100 times with it and the fan just didn't hold up. There's one on order and we'll get it fixed when it comes back in. Still, at the same time, all of these cars have the same type of deal in there where they have a center differential and the center differential will immediately dictate how the power is transmitted front and rear. Now the thing about that is when the Creighton 4S, that's this one, it had some pretty stiff fluid in it and it was really hard to keep the front wheels on the ground. That's really cool if you're into stunting, but at the same time it didn't help with control a lot and we wound up being on the brakes a lot to get the front wheels down so we could steer around stuff. And control makes a big difference in that if it would had been able to keep the front wheels down a little more, it would have been a lot more fun for us. But, and I'll say this a lot guys, how you set your diffs up and how you drive is a personal choice. How you set yours up for you, if it makes you smile, awesome. But that doesn't mean the guy next to you would enjoy driving your car because his style and how he would like it set up is a personal choice for him. So what it comes down to is these cars all handle different. The Italian, straight out of the box, had fairly light fluid in it, and it would overspin the front tires like crazy. It would, it would overspin them really good, keep that front end down, and it was fast. Well, the, the Italian is a fast car. It's 70 miles an hour out of the box with the speed gear in it, and that's why they put the light fluid in there to keep it from flipping over. When the Creighton 4S, we had our Creighton 6S came out of the box, and it was just the BLX version, the version four. When that came out of the box, it had fairly stiff fluid in it and the front wheels were in there a lot. And part of that had to do with the tire mass. They are bigger on the Creighton, but at the same time with the thicker fluid in there, it kept more power to the rear wheels. And right out of the back, right off the bat, we flipped it over a few times, destroyed the new body on it because it was so bad. But that's only bad if you're not into that also on the very end down there, the sledge, that one was terrible for that. It had, it was almost locked down. The fluid that comes in the sledge is super thick and it makes it look like crazy powerful and it is fast. But at the same time, it was so thick that we couldn't keep the front wheels on the ground and that made the car less fun to drive. When we took that apart and put lighter fluid in it, we kept the front wheels down a little better. It gave us more control and it was more enjoyable on our end of things you can still get the backflips because it turns all four wheels when there's no resistance in the back. It still spins them all evenly, but when there's resistance in the back, when you get that traction, that lighter fluid will transmit the extra power to the front. So let's say you put super light fluid in it and we have differentials from some of the older cars that 
weren't even sealed. They were just, you squirt a little something in there to lubricate them and that's how they ran. They were wide open. There was nothing you could do about it. And these cars were fun to play with too. You don't necessarily have to have full differentials as far as fluids go, but it doesn't hurt to have them filled up either. As long as you've got lubrication in there and the car handles the way you want it to, there's nothing wrong with that, run it. But at the same time, when you do this kind of thing and the car is unpleasant because it doesn't do what you want it to, knowing how to tune the fluids is a huge deal. So if you put a super light fluid in, I mean, some of the lightest fluid you can get in your differential, and it doesn't accelerate the way you want it to, it overspins the fronts too much. And that can happen. You crouch a little, the front tires lift just enough to get them to spin and it burns all the extra power off while it doesn't send enough to the rear end to get that acceleration you want. Stiffen your fluid a little, try it again. Stiffen it a little more until you get the actual hole shot you're, that's under control that you're looking for. If you just want to pop the wheels up, you can stiffen it way up and some people use earplugs. We've done that. But at the same time, how you want yours to handle depends on the fluid that you put in there to get the right amount of traction for what you're looking for. So there you go, guys. Center Differentials 101. And I know we didn't tear one apart for you, but if you want to see how differentials come apart and whatnot, check out Differentials 101. That one's in the playlist, and it, it covers just about everything about the differentials. And we actually have a video on the LSD or limited slip diffs as well. And that should cover just about everything you need to know about this subject. This video simply geared towards your understanding of what they're for, how you tune them, is up to you. So if you haven't already, guys, don't forget to bash that like button and help our content spread. You know, we really love helping the community here. That's really what we are. And join us on Facebook at AJGM Studios on, on Facebook. And we've got some stuff and some links and whatnot in there. And we're a member of several of the groups. And we have a good time helping people there too. If you have anything you'd like to add to this video, something constructive that can help the community, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, for AJGM Studios, I'm AJ Sam. Keep wrenching, guys.